We're going to start our debate in a moment, but first we're going to uh, hear about some voter information provided by the League of Women Voters. Thanks, John. Hi, good evening. Can you all hear me? Okay. So I'm Mike Richter. I live in Cherry Hill. I am a member of the League of Women Voters of Camden County. The reason why I'm here tonight is because you folks are hearing or going to hear a debate from the candidates who live in Atlantic County who are seeking a position as an Atlantic County commissioner, formerly known as a freeholder. So this is just a bit of information for those of you who want to know about ways to vote. So there are three, essentially. Number one is to vote by mail. You can, you can apply for a vote by mail ballot following instructions on a website. I'll give this website to you at the end or contacting your county clerk. And remember, vote by mail ballots cannot be returned to any early voting location or at any polling places in this election. Number two, in-person voting, early voting. This new option enables all registered voters to cast their ballot in person using a voting machine during a nine-day period prior to the election. You can now choose to vote in person when it's most convenient for your schedule. Number three, at your polling place on election day. Voting in person at your polling place is from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. on election day, November 2. And the website you can go to for more information is vote.nj.gov. Okay, John. Thank you. Good evening. Welcome to Stockton University and to its beautiful Campus Center Theater. And welcome to all of you who are watching us online. <clears throat> I'm John Ferengen, Executive Director of the William J. Hughes Center for Public Policy here at Stockton. We at the Hughes Center are very pleased to partner with the League of Women Voters of Atlanta County to bring you this evening's debate among candidates for Atlanta County Commissioner. Special thanks to Victoria Druding of the League for her work in putting together this event. And a recording of this debate will be archived at www.stockton.edu slash Hughes Center. I also want to thank the candidates for participating in this debate. Allow me to introduce them. Please stand or wave as I call your name. Uh, for at-large commissioner, we have Frank X. Ballas, Republican, and Celeste Fernandez, Democrat. For District 2 Commissioner, we have Jelani Gandhi, Democrat, versus Maureen Kern, Republican. And for District 3 Commissioner, Andrew Parker, Republican, versus Thelma Witherspoon, Democrat. The Hughes Center and the League of Women Voters see great value in candidate debates. They help voters make up their minds. I believe your participation here is a sign of respect for the voters. So again, thank you. The namesake of my policy center, the late ambassador and congressman Bill Hughes, was passionate about civility in politics, about civic engagement, and about working to better inform the public. We honor that legacy through spirited yet civil political discourse. Sponsoring debates is one way the Hughes Center carries on that mission. And now I'll introduce uh, our moderator for this debate, Michael Richter. He has been a member of the League of Women Voters for some 30 years. He is a lifelong resident of New Jersey and is a member of the Camden County League. Retired as a respiratory therapist, Michael is active in volunteer work, including Boy Scouts of America, U.S. Coast Guard Academy, and multiple environmental organizations. We thank him for moderating tonight, and I turn things over to him now. Good. Thank you, John. So good evening. And let's, let's just approach this in the spirit in which this was organized. This is a forum for the voters of Atlantic County to learn who they're going to vote for to represent them. You know, we, we, we as citizens, you know, have those inalienable rights 
life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. It's government that really makes that happen. You know, we, we are a democratic society, small d, and, you know, this is the process that we have chosen to abide by for, you know, 200 plus years. Uh, just to put a quick historical context on this, even though the United States government, you know, came into being in the late 1700s, it wasn't until just 100 years ago that adult women had the right to vote. You know, think about that. That, that, that if somebody today said, you know, you or you or you are no longer eligible to, eligible to vote or only eligible to vote under certain circumstances, that, that would just be unacceptable. The League of Women Voters founded a hundred years, was founded a hundred years ago to promote the very concept of adult women having the right to vote for their own life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. So, you are very fortunate here in Atlanta County to have a dedicated group of all volunteers who do a lot of work on a daily and weekly basis to help people find out where to vote, how they can register to vote, how they put uh, uh, um, debates like this on. That there's a lot of work that goes in behind the scenes to a lot of things that we take for granted in our democracy. So, you know, on behalf of you folks, I think the League of Atlantic County deserves your gratitude. All right, so um, we're going to get into questions that were written by a committee from the Atlantic County League. And I'm going to start reading them. Uh, we've simply agreed to do this as simple as possible. I'm going to read questions to the candidates in alphabetical order of their last name. And they're going to have two minutes to, uh, they're two minutes to make, I'm sorry, let me, let me start over. Th each candidate will have two minutes to make an opening statement. And then I will start reading questions to each of the candidates. And they have a minute to respond. And uh, any other candidate will have 30 seconds to rebut that response. So, you know, th this should go pretty well. We're going to stumble here and there a bit, but we'll, we'll, we'll do fine. Okay, so let's start with the first question, and that will be to Mr. Ballas. Are we going to do the opening statements? Oh, I'm, so I'm sorry. I did, I did it again. All right. Uh, Ms. Fernandez, please. And I'll be introducing myself, correct? Yes, thank you. <laughs> Good evening, everyone, and thank you for being here tonight. Thank you uh, to Stockton University and the League of Women Voters uh, for putting this together uh, and give our residents of Alani County more information. And also, we are celebrating the uh, Hispanic Heritage Month, so we are in celebration as well. My name is Celeste Fernandez. I am the Democratic candidate for Alani County Commissioner at Large. I am a small business uh, owner. I am a community leader. I am an activist. I am a mother of three and a grandmother of five. Yes, I know I look a little young, young, but I have five grandkids. So that is one of the reasons, or the main reason I'm here, because I think that our children and our next generation deserve a better future. And it is our responsibility to make that better future for them as the one before us did it for us. I am working right now to place Alani County at the forefront of sustainability and makes it an economically, socially, and environmentally better place to live, work, and locate a business. And prepare our people to be better workers, consumers, and investors because we have great assets in Alani County that all of us can leverage and move Alani County forward. Thank you for being here and your support. Again. Thanks for hosting this debate. I'm happy to be here back at Stockton University, my alma mater. Today, we're living in some pretty troubling times. We have a political arena that has become divisive and even violent. Friends can't talk to each other anymore. Families can't even sit together at the dinner table and eat. And all while we have become more tribalistic in our politics, we have a pandemic that has taken the lives and changed the lives of so many people. 
Just in Atlanta County alone, the death toll has reached 728. Now I didn't say almost 800. I didn't say over 700. I said 728 because each and every one of them mattered. Look, I lost my uncle due to COVID earlier this year. So I know what it's like to have that void in your heart. I know what it's like to see their name in your phone contact list and know that if you click call, it goes nowhere but the dial tone. But while we are being tested in these strenuous ways, I still believe that our best days lie ahead. My name is Jelani Gandhi. I'm a lifelong resident from Linwood, and I also went to Stockton here and graduated. As a kid, my dad would take me to my siblings to Atlantic City to go out and help the homeless with water, food, and clothing. You know, so I took my attraction to community service right here to Stockton University, where I was elected to the Stockton Student Senate, and then also the founding father president of my fraternity. We raised thousands of dollars there for philanthropy and also spent hundreds of hours doing community service. I'm also the community relations director for WEHA. I'm running because I want to continue giving back to my community, but in a bigger impact. When I think about the challenges we face today, I think about the bold ideas that are needed to address them. For too long, we've had old solutions to, new, to old problems, but now we need some new solutions to today's problems. We need to address the property taxes. We need to address the new economic opportunities. And folks, we have to address the coastal flooding. So when I'm elected for the commissioner for District 2, you're going to expect me to be a new, strong, independent voice for the people. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Thelma Witherspoon, and I am a candidate for District 3 in Atlantic County. I'm running to be the representative, if selected by the voters, uh, to represent them on the commission, county commissioner. Also to be able to have that voice to make decisions in legislation for the, ele for the, for the county. I, I've been involved in the community all my life over the last 30 years, but that doesn't give me an entitlement for the seat. I am running because I am honest, I have integrity, I'm resilient, I persevere, I work hard, and I wanna work hard for the residents of District 3. Again, my name is Thelma Witherspoon. Thank you so much. Mr. Ballas. Good evening. My name is Frank Ballas. I'm the county commissioner at large currently here in Atlanta County. First of all, I'd like to thank the League of Women Voters, Stockton University, and the Press of Atlantic City for hosting us tonight. Um, just to tell you a little bit about myself, I'm married to my wife Cindy, who's sitting out there, and uh, tomorrow will be our 27th anniversary, so a early happy anniversary to my wife. I have two children and four grandchildren, a five-year-old, four-year-old, three-year-old, and a four-week-old, and they are our life. Our children are our future, like you've heard earlier tonight. And I'm running to make sure that we can do everything possible to make sure that Atlantic County and the state of New Jersey is a better place than what we grew up in. Um, a little bit about my background. I served as a police officer in the city of Pleasantville for 25 years, and I was the sheriff of Atlantic County for nine years. So I have 34 years of experience in law enforcement, um, all but about five, um, whereas in a supervisory position. After law enforcement, I was elected to Egg Harbor Township as a committeeman, and then um, appointed in a special election of the county committee to fill this, the seat of Frank Formica, who stepped down, and now I'm running this year. Um, I believe my experience is, is paramount, you know, on the local level, on the county level, and, you know, as the sheriff, I went to every mayor's association meeting. I went to the League of Municipalities meetings, um, I learned as much as I possibly could and helped as many people as I possibly could. Um, also have been a volunteer locally, have been on the board of Avanzar, which is formerly the Women's Center since 2009, and um, many other volunteer positions I've held here in Atlantic County. And, and again, um, I would, would like your support, and again, thank you for joining us here tonight. Start. Hi, I'm Maureen Kern, Chair of the Atlanta County Board of Commissioners. I've been in the tourism industry for over 25 years. Currently, I am the National Sales Manager for Caesars Entertainment. I'm the mother of three amazing sons and married to Jay for over 30 years. 
and most recently a grandmother to Sienna. I have lived at Summers Point my entire life and have dedicated most of my adult life serving the people of our great community. My college degree is in business, not in political science. I have served in a variety of positions, both volunteer and elected, some of which were the rec board of, you know, um, board of education, the foundation, and chair of the Good Old Days Festival, council president in Summers Point and county commissioner where I was elected by my peers to be the first woman vice chair ever. And now I hold the position of chairwoman of the board of commissioners. It will come as no surprise that I love our great county and working for the families in Atlanta County. We all agree that Atlanta County was severely hard hit by COVID-19 with the highest unemployment rates in the state. This underscored what we already knew about an over-reliance on a single industry and importance of diversification. Our plan and investments we made prior to the pandemic in the aviation industry now provide the foundation for rebuilding our economy, attracting new business, <coughs> and providing higher paying jobs. I have found throughout the years as a public servant and volunteering for a variety of organizations, my experience as a mother raising three sons and working over 20 years in the tourism industry, advocating for those suffering with mental health issues and disabilities has shaped who I am as a public servant. These roles and my passions and diversity of experiences have helped me serve all citizens of our great county. Thank you for having me here this evening. First, I want to thank Stockton University, the League of Women Voters, and the Atlantic City Press for putting this uh, debate together so that the public can be informed. My name is Andrew Parker, and I am a 13-year educator in the city of Atlantic City Public Schools. I served on the Egg Harbor Township Zoning Board for 13 years. I was elected to Egg Harbor Township Township Committee uh, three years ago, where my responsibilities range from liaison to the Police Athletic League to our new, newly formed LEAP program, which is Law Enforcement um, Activities Programs. I am on the Economic Development Commission. I also serve on the Personnel Committee for the newly form formulated County Court um, regional shared services. I have several different leadership positions that I serve within my educational background. I am the legislative action team chair of the city of Atlantic City Public Schools. I am also on the executive committee for, rep committee for the Atlantic County Council of Education Association in charge of uh, CBC, collective bargaining and advocacy um, I'm also an NEA RA delegate, which is the largest deliberative body um, in the world that come together on educational policies throughout our country. I have a diverse background. I have a business degree where I graduated summa cum laude. I have a master's degree in education teaching mathematics where I also graduated summa cum laude. And I'm running to make our county the best county that it possibly can be as I've done in Egg Harbor Township to make Egg Harbor Township the best town that it could be. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now we're gonna start <laughs> with questions. All right, so we've agreed again to go in alphabetical order. And so I will start with Mr. Bowes. And the question is, as defined by the state of New Jersey, the role of the county commission is to quote, manage the business of the county, end quote. What management experience and or skills do you have that qualifies you to this elected office? Perfect, thank you, sir. Well, um, in, in our county, it's a little unique because we have a county executive and a uh, administrator, but what makes me uniquely qualified is my experience in public service, my experience as a police officer, my experience as a captain of police, the administrative captain that did all the purchasing um, did all the hiring, um, anything administratively with the police department grants and dealing with the local government on a day-to-day -day basis. 
Um, then being elected to sheriff on a county basis, dealing with the freeholders at that time, um, now county commissioners, and all the mayors throughout the county, along with their administration and their um, council people or commission people, um, and you know, just the, the information that I've gained through that experience makes me uniquely qualified to be a county commissioner. Okay, thanks. I just wanted to just refresh for everyone's uh, benefit. Um, the time that we're allowing for an answer is one minute. If each of you would like to rebut or dispute, you have 30 seconds to do that. Okay? So if there are no rebuttals, then we're going to go on to the next question. Good? Okay. So to uh, Ms. Fernandez, how would you effectively and consistently communicate with the citizens, uh, citizens of Atlantic County? Describe how you would be accessible to their concerns. Well, I have been involved in our community for over 20 years. I have been part of the community. I have been helping the community, especially last year when the pandemic hit. Uh, I put thousands of hours and months and days making sure that our families have food on the table, that they, are, uh, that they have the need, that they, the help that they need, I'm sorry, when unemployment uh, was needed in their, in their homes. Um, I've been working with the small businesses as well and in different areas, helping them to apply for the law and looking for information that is needed. So I am doing that already, as the contrary of my opponent, and um, I've been in the community, like I said, 20 years. I've been here, I am here, and I'm gonna be here in the future. And so last year show, shows our character. What I was around the county helping the community, my opponent wasn't. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Any rebuttal? Any uh, sure, I comments? That. You have 30 <laughs> seconds, please. <laughs> um, maybe just because my opponent and I, which is Ms. Fernandez, um, are not in the same circles, and maybe she did not see me and I did not see her at her different events, that does not mean that I have not been in the community and not only when I was with Egerber Township, but when this pandemic started, but also with the county, making sure that the residents of Atlanta County, and when I was with Egerber Township, the residents of Egerber <laughs> Township and its employees had what they needed and continued to get what they need as far as vaccines and testing. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, we we're looking for people who haven't spoken yet. Thank you. All right, are we good? Okay, next question goes to Mr. Gandhi for one minute response. The state's definition of the role of the commission in also includes, quote, overseeing the county's long range management, end quote. With regard to global warming and its subsequent effect on Atlanta County, what concerns you the most and how would you address it? Thanks for the question. Well, everybody knows that climate change is the existential threat to the planet. Since most of us here have been children, we've always heard global warming or climate change. We have to make sure that the generations after us have a planet to go to, because there's no plan B. We also have to make sure that those who don't believe in it know that it's coming, because the people of Atlantic County know that it's here, and it's not going to change any way or any shape. Now, I'm a numbers guy. The New Jersey Corps just came here recently, and they, had a, they held a public meeting. And in 100 years, the sea level rose around the globe eight inches. In Atlantic County and the rest of the Jersey shores, it rose 18 inches. That's crazy. We have to do more to make sure that the environment and that the globe is safe for our children. Not to mention as well, in Summers Point and many other beaches around the area, they're ranked to be pretty low in the, in the, in the state. Uh, Summers Point Beach, where my uh, opponent's hometown is, was actually shut down because of the bacterial water in 2019. If the kids can't enjoy the beach, what can they enjoy? So I'm gonna make sure that the children have a place that they can enjoy. Thank you. Any rebuttal? 
Uh, yeah, I just have one. When you talk about Summers Point and the beach, it happens to many beaches, and that's why we go out and test those waters. Many things can happen for the bacterial levels that are taken, and we shut them down right away, and we shut them down to protect our people in the city and who come and visit our beaches, and that's the right thing to do. Thank you. Anyone else? 30-second rebuttal? Okay, next question. Next question goes to Ms. Kern. There are five hospitals in Atlanta County. Three of those hospitals are in flood zones. All of them are in close proximity to the ocean or bay. What plan do you believe should be in place to mitigate the dangers of flooding, loss of access, extreme dan danger to the hospitals, uh, da damage, sorry, to the hospitals, and being inaccessible during emergency needs? Okay, well, if we talk about flooding, these are very complex issues, as everyone knows, that require coordination among many entities. I don't disagree that we need a long-term plan to address these issues. As you can see from today's paper, we are in conversations with FEMA. The county stands ready to support our municipalities and our hospitals in flooding issues. I realize it may not be apparent to residents which roads are under our district. Thousands of roads in this county are, we, well, we have 374 miles of roads, but we cannot take the, you know, the lead on all of them when it comes to the municipalities. Uh, basically, flooding is a function of FEMA, Army Corps of Engineers, as um, my opponent has mentioned. They have been here. This is not the first time that they have been here to address this issue. It is, but it is a partnership. Government is teamwork, and it has to be done between the municipal level, the county level, the state, and federal level. We. Uh, was I up? <laughs> so I thought, thank you. Okay, thank you. Any rebuttal? Well, I just would like to say that since I've been a kid, at least, and most of the people here have been growing up in Atlantic County, when you drive down that White Horse Pike, Route 30, it's like you're driving to Atlantis and not Atlantic City. It's been like that for a long time. You've been in office for a long time, and there has been no solutions. For too long, Atlantic County has heard old solutions to today's problems. So I'm going to make sure that we have a solution, not tomorrow, but today. Anyone else? May I? Please. So during Sandy, which I believe was our high water mark here in Atlanta County, um, none of the hospitals here in Atlanta County was compromised. Um, there was access to each and every one of them. As a matter of fact, the um, emergency management site in Atlantic City Hospital was used not only by some of the county, but also by the state police. Um, listen, flooding is an issue. Flooding has always been an issue. But I can tell you, in my experience, there's virtually not a whole lot of things that a county commissioner can do to stop flooding. Um, so to continue to say I'm going to stop flooding, I think is ludicrous. Anyone else? But you can be part of the committee. You can advocate. You can work on it. I mean, you don't have to be a commissioner. I am a community leader, and I've been working for 20 years. And I'm working to move Alani County forward now. We're working on the floor issue now. I belong to the Greater Alani County Atlantic City Chamber of Commerce to the Economic Development Committee, and we are working on that. And we are not commissioners. We're not elected officials. We are ordinary people doing hard work to produce extraordinary resources and resource, resorts for the Alani County residents and communities. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, moving on to the next question for Mr. Parker. <clears throat> if Atlanta County were to receive funds f from a federal infrastructure bill, what would be your priority expenditure for the infrastructure in Atlanta County? Well, if we were to receive fundings for infrastructure, I think if you look at flooding is one of the things that we talked about just now, so that's something that we do need to take a look at. Now, I know that that's a, more of a state issue, and so I know that the state would have to come in and, um, and be a part of that plan. So I understand what Frank is saying. There are job functions that we have, and the county has a specific job function, and the state has a specific job function, as well as the municipalities. So there are, there are, there are certain things that we have to do to stay within our lanes to work within government to get things done. 
So when we're talking about infrastructure, you look at some of the projects that are going on right now with our roads. The county's doing uh, our road projects and on the Black Horse Pike over in the mall areas. They're doing road projects over on the White Horse Pike. So improving our roads, improving our bridges, which are some of the projects that we're taking on right now. But, you know, and just improving some of our, uh, uh, you know, some of our outdated buildings. We have a lot of outdated buildings that need up, that need repair. And in this COVID, um, in this new environment that we have now, it becomes more important, especially for schools. We have schools out there that are 100 years old. So we have to make some improvements there. Thank you. Rebuttals? Good? Okay. Thank you. Okay, for Ms. Witherspoon. Mm -hmm. Atlantic City is the economic keystone in Atlantic County. What responsibilities do you believe the commission has in assisting with the continued success of Atlantic City? How would you propose to do it? Well, one thing I've learned when I was the president of the Board of Education, I'm only one vote. I think uh, a collaboration with uh, different entities coming together to come up with solutions to help sustain Atlantic City would be the best, excuse me, would be the best idea. I think no one has all of the answers, but I think collectively working together with various organizations, we could come up with what we need to sustain Atlantic City. Rebuttal? Serving on economic development, that's one of the key things that I've run on in, when I ran in Egg Township and one of the main issues that I'm running on now. So we need to diversify the economy. We know this. We've got to go away from just having one industry in the casinos that's not going to sustain us anymore. We need to bring more jobs in. If you look at some of the work that we're doing right now with the aviation, bringing aviation in, in the county and working with the ACEA, the Atlantic County Economic Alliance, uh, along with some of the economic commissions, in, like in Egg Harbor Township, where we're redeveloping a revisioning plan for economics right now to diversify our economy and create better paying jobs in Atlantic County. Please. So, exactly. Um, just as Mr. Parker stated, diversification. And the county has played a big part in diversification in Atlantic City. Um, Stockton in Atlantic City, if it wasn't for the county um, bonding, that would not be there. Um, the ACIA, just with the, the bonding for the water park that's coming into Atlantic City. Um, changing Atlantic City's um, face is going to help all through Atlantic County. Because what happens in Atlantic County basically um, happens throughout the entire county. So um, aviation coming here, diversifying the county is, is so important and that will help Atlantic City also. Yes, if we remember, the problem with Atlantic City starts for the lack of leadership and direction. So you can have all the money in the world if you don't have leadership, direction, a vision, and a plan. We're not going anywhere. We got to start right there. We keep electing the same people to be our, our representative, and they can take in the same step and making the same decisions. This is a decade later that we are dealing with the same things that we was taking care of 10 years ago. Thank you. Ms. Kern? Okay, um, I work in Atlantic County. I work in the tourism industry. I've been in that industry for quite a few years. Atlantic City needs to, to diversify what they offer people. And as you mentioned, the, um, the, water, the water park that's coming in. There, there are a few things coming in. We need air. We need transportation into Atlantic City. We need the rail to come in. Those are the things, I work in the convention industry. We have a hard time booking some of the larger conventions because we can't get them here. I agree with everything that everyone is saying up here on the dais. However, as county commissioners, there are certain things that we are not responsible for. Certainly, we can be a part and give solutions to, again, collaborate so we can have various things in our area. I don't think any of us have all of the answers, but I think working together, we can get the job done. Thank you. 
Okay. Good. You. you oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Get to rebut our own question. <laughs> That's not part of the rules. You know, just, I, I, it, was, it wasn't stated. It wasn't explicitly stated. <laughs> so I just wanted to know. Rules. Rules. The rules. Oh, oh okay. sorry. The rules. Yeah, I, I, I think in the interest of fairness, I'm just going to say no to that. Okay. okay. And and I'm just going to ask that that each candidate have one rebuttal to each question. Okay. Okay. All right. Good. Right. All right. Mm -hmm. So, this is now going back to Mr. Ballas. And the question is, the University of Wisconsin, with support of the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, has ranked the counties of New Jersey for health care. Atlanta County ranked in the bottom 25% of the study. There appears to be a pattern of inequity for people of lower incomes and in communities of color. Why do you think this exists in Atlanta County? And how can it be improved? How will you do that? Thank you. Um, I'm not sure why that exists in this county. Um, it, the county applies for and receives many grants that are then filtered down to um, the population throughout the county that applies for it. Um, I think one of the reasons why we do rank low is because of casinos in Atlantic City, which draws a, a different crowd. Um, we are the only county in this state that um, has the casinos. We have a rescue mission there. There are many homeless people that, you know, we have heard for many, many years that um, are sent on Greyhound therapy, put on a Greyhound bus and sent to Atlantic City because of having a rescue mission there. And the totality of, of that um, is why Atlantic County does uh, rank lower. I don't believe that it's um, any, you could say any fault really to the county administration because everything, whether it's feather, federal or state, the county does apply for and then passes down through the services through Atlantic County, whether it's through the, the family service centers that are throughout the county. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I was going to let you finish your, your, your statement. That's fine. All right. Any rebuttal to this? Ms. Kern? I just want to say um, we have many, many services throughout Atlanta County, uh, one of which, uh, like our prenatal for uh, women, we have quite a few uh, women health centers and uh, as well as men and opportunities for people to get the help that they need. However, we can't mandate it, and we do find a low uh, percentage of people taking advantage of what we have. So what we need to do probably is get a better way of getting the information out. And a lot of it is education. They need to learn about what we have to offer. Thank you. I'd like to. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry. Mr. Gandhi, 30 seconds to rebut. Oh, it was me. The, the, the I'm sorry. I thought you raised your hand. All right, Ms. Fernandez. It was me. If, if my opponent uh, and the rest of the team would have hung out with me, instead of being playing golf maybe in Egg Harbor Township, in being in the community, listen to the people, listen to the needs, then he will know what the community needs. And that prenatal program is not getting into our communities. We have a high rate of mortality uh, in our brown, black and brown community. Get in touch with your community. But it's too late now because you've been in, in position of power for too long and got complacent. Get into the community. Hang Thank out you. with me a little bit more. Thank you learned you. something. Well, first, I'd like to defend that golf course in Egg Harbor Township. Being a committee man in Egg Harbor Township, that is a open space land that was a, a dump that we repurposed and turned into something that is a positive for everybody, including the municipality. So I, I, please go out to our golf course. And so I'd like to say, as far as the county programs are concerned in health care, Maureen touched on it. And I want to concur with what she said. We have a lot of programs in the county. We have to make sure. I also uh, told you that I teach in Atlantic City. So I, I'm always in those communities where Celeste is talking about. And we do need to find a way to make sure that the information about these programs are getting to the people that need it the most. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Ms. Whitsman. Yes, I think uh, uh, creating uh, a position to highlight the programs that the county has would be a wonderful thing to make sure um, that people are aware of the programs that are out there and maybe that would help 
with the um, low health rates of minorities. Thank you. Okay. Good. All right. Then our next question. What, what's the time? I don't have the watch. I have 40 yet. 20 minutes up. 7 40. Thank you. Okay. The next question will start with Ms. Fernandez again. Um, and it is United States, uh, U.S. News in conjunction with the Aetna Foundation ranks the top 500 healthiest communities nationwide. In the 2021 ranking, Atlanta County received an overall score of 48 out of a possible 100. Deficits were identified as food insecurity, children under 18 with health insurance, the cost of and the lack of transportation, and growing domestic violence. Based on this information, we have several questions that I'm going to present to all of you. So we're going to just take these in alphabetical order, okay? And I'll give you two minutes for your response. Okay, Ms. Fernandez, could you address the problem with food insecurity? What problems does it create for the county? What would be a resolution? That's one of the main issues that we are confronting right now. It's a shame that we are fighting hunger in Alani County on the 21st century when we have so many farms. So that collectively uh, working together is not happening in this, governor, in, in, this, in this government in Alani County. Our residents have left to just go and ask for food to the food bank to the churches, to many different places. And the main reason is because inequality, the disparities in our, in our uh, Alani County system, in our Alani County government. When I went and asked uh, to, oh, 15 seconds, I'm sorry, when I sat down with the county executive and asked why our community are not receiving the help that they, that, that they need and how the programs are not reaching our community, he said, oh, they know, they, they know coming, they know coming to us and receiving the services. I say, oh, you are reaching those communities and that where the problem is, inequality. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, a rebuttal? 30 second rebuttal? I can, I can rebut real quick. Thank you, sir. Um, well, I know as of, of last year, you know, our, our population in Atlantic County, two, 280, 285,000. Um, at one point, we were um, up around 100,000 people on some type of assistance through the county. So um, people that want the assistance, it's out there for them. Um, my opponent keeps saying we keep electing the same people over and over again. Um, I'll let you know that um, next month, around the third will be one year that I've been a commissioner. So I guess she's not talking about me. <laughs> yes. uh, I have helped organize with my church a food distribution uh, in the community where we do it monthly. I saw a need, so to just to help with everything else that is going on, uh, that's what we've done. And then what, what we did, we included um, household products, baby diapers, uh, things of that nature to be able to help those in the community. I, I don't think one person is the blame. I think if we all do our part, we can say like Mahatma Gandhi, be the change you want to see. Thank you, Ms. Kern. 30 seconds. Yes, hi. And I, I agree with what you're saying, uh, Thelma. It's, we had, over the past year and a half, so many people that needed assistance. I want to commend our community and the county and the many institutions and groups of people that came out, did food runs, and you know put all of the information out there for people like where they can go to get food. It was critical. This was something that never happened to us before this type of pandemic. But the way the community came out, I am just going to commend our community for what they've done for everybody. Thank you, Mr. Parker. If you look at what happened, and I agree with what everyone's saying up here on the stage, we do need to come together. We do need a partnership. We do need to work on this, uh, on this issue. It is a major problem. And we're talking about uh, families that, again, that I teach. I teach in these areas where, you know, these kids are and these families are suffering from, um, 
food insecurities. So I watched as our one of my fraternity organization, fraternal organizations, and my union, and the the county, and and churches, and and and, and you know, so many community involved people came together and did so many food distributions week after week after week. And so we are doing a great job, but we have to do better. Thank you. You spoke to this question yes. already, <laughs> now, so please just okay. okay one, no one, one one response. It to is this. hard when you're on the clock. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So good. Um, Mr. Gandhi, under that preamble where Atlantic County was rated 48 out of 100, okay, children under 18 without health care insurance, what problem does it create for the county? What would you propose to do to resolve it? Well, it's sad to hear that Atlantic County ranks so low. You know, like we've all been saying for too long, the people who have been in power have not done much about that. And I want to make sure that we can do something about that. So when it comes to those who are under 18, those who are being affected by uh, home, by food, um, not having enough food, not having enough health care, I think that's an important issue. I think what we have to do is find the cause reason for those issues. You know, just not too long ago, I was with the Bangladesh Association of South Jersey. We were going out there giving out food uh, with the community food bank that Thelma works with as well. And I was asking one of the young guys that were there, and he was asking, where are the people in charge doing this? I said, hey, you, look, you know what? Change doesn't start from the top. It starts from the bottom and on up. So it's the people that got together to go out there on those Wednesdays. It's the people that got together that went out there every single month, once a month, who are giving the food to those who need it. This creates a problem also because right now we're seeing the hospitals fill up with a lot of patients because of COVID. Uh, right now, actually, Atlanta County was ranked the second highest amount of, of COVID outspreads in our schools. That's ridiculous. We have to make sure that children have food and have a place to sleep at night. Thank you. Any other rebuttal? 30 second rebuttal? Yes. Okay, I didn't know if you're looking at me or down the way. <laughs> okay. I just want to say that many people are not aware of the services. If you're talking 18 and other, we have flu clinics, free flu shots you know, throughout the county. And we have 164 substance abuse programs. We have transportation free. All this is free. We have Meals on Wheels. We have, we're available to residents of all income levels. And we have also access to free health care within our county. Thanks. Then from what I see, there's a disconnection be between the county government and the community. And that is a problem. And another problem is, you are serving a diverse community with diverse issues and diverse needs that the people that are representing uh, those, those communities don't understand it and don't care to because you're not involved in the community. And I can say that because I'm in there every single day and it just hurt me that listen to you how many programs are available and our people are suffering. They're hopeless, they're hungry, they're jobless. When are we gonna give them hope and say we are here for you? And I'm sorry, this is dear to my heart. Thank you. Ms. Witherspoon. Uh, what I have done, I have used my social media uh, and my radio program. I have a, a community show. When I see stuff on the county website or on different places, I put it on social media. I put it on my radio program so that I can inform the community of the things that we have available, whether it's vaccinations, whether it's flu shots, whether it's food, whatever it is, um, that's what I have done to be a help to the residents of Atlanta County. Thank you. Sir. Bill. Yes. Um, as the saying goes, it takes a village. And that's why it's not just the municipality, not just the county, not just the state. It, it takes all the different not-for-profits. It takes the community leaders, like Celeste says. Um, you know, she's been in the community helping and helping to change stuff over 20 years. Um, when I was sheriff, I created a real help program and helped so many people that were facing foreclosure where families and children were being put out on the street, maintain their home, get their house refinanced, and stay in their home instead of being evicted. And that's, what, that's what's done in the county. Thank you. Got it. OK, Mr. Parker. I think it's been said, so I'm not gonna re reiterate some of the things that were said based on the rules earlier, but we all have to play our part, you know, and I think everyone's doing their part 
to, to the best that they, that, they, that they can. Some people do it on Facebook. Some people are out in the community face to face. Some people are teachers. Some people are mentors. We all have a role to play to make sure that everybody gets the help and the information that they need. So for our voters out there, just you know, make sure we're holding whoever you're going to vote for accountable to make sure they're doing something. Good. Thank you. All right, folks. OK, again, going back to that preamble of the uh, ranking for Atlantic County as coming in 48 out of 100 rating, to Ms. Kern, the cost and lack of transport, the cost and the lack of transportation in the county is an issue. What problems does this cause, and what would a resolution be? As I said before, we need to do better with our transportation. I understand that. The cost, some of it is federal, some of it is state. We are restricted in certain ways of what we can do. But we need, we do have transportation that people may not be aware of, but we do. We, uh, I think there's like 6,000 or 10,000, I forget the exact number, of people that we transport around Atlantic City. We transport people to doctor's appointments, to church, to you know, whatever they need. We have free transportation at, at this time. Rebuttals, 30 seconds. Yes, it's me again. And again, how we had these services in our community are not using it. That is why, ladies and gentlemen, we need diversification on the commissioner board. That, that board had to represent the community they serve. If you see them, then don't, they don't represent us. And that's why we are ranking 48% in that in front of Hungary. So we need diverse representation in the board so we can bring our ideas, our plan, and our vision. We understand our middle class workers and we understand our our diverse community. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. With the spoon? Uh, now the transportation that I thought you were talking about maybe dealt with buses and trains and things of that nature. I do know that uh, there's going to be another airline coming into the city. But I do want to say that the county does have transportation for people who are sick, who need to go to doctor's appointments, and to the grocery store. You have to call up. I didn't know about this until I had family members who were in need of transportation. So it's about finding it out. Thank you. Mr. Bells? Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, first of all, um, as a county commissioner, I represent everybody. I'm colorblind. I don't see um, black, white, Hispanic, Asian. I represent everybody throughout our entire county. Um, while sheriff, I was on a, a committee that started a Western End transportation with Pascal Slikes Foundation, and there was a lot of different components that went into that. Um, we have transportation, of course, within the city, whether it's Jitney bus or county pickup. But the western part of the town, where believe it or not, there are um, people that really need the help. And we were able to get a, a bus line going out there. And now that's been picked up through grant money after Pascal, Pascal Sykes and the county picks that up. Okay, thank you. Mr. Parker? Not to repeat what anyone else said up here, it starts with education. Being the teacher up here on the, on, on the panel, it starts with education and it starts young. It, we have these programs. We have to educate people to let them know what they are. So I'll turn and go to the rail system that we have down here, and it is unacceptable. We all know it. In order for us to do better economically, for economic development, we need that rail system to run. We need it to be updated, and we need it to, we have so much better technology now, and, and, and it's, you know, running that old locomotive system is just not acceptable. And if we get better jobs, we, we increase the economy, we get better companies coming in here, then we'll get better benefits and everything else will settle itself out. Thank you. Thank you. Any, any other? Okay. Next question. And again, under that heading, for the ranking of 48 out of 100. To uh, Mr. Parker. Domestic violence is growing in Atlantic County. What role does the commission have in addressing the problem? What other agencies would or could you engage? Thank you for the question. It's interesting that you bring that up because just this morning, I told you guys that I serve on a personnel committee with the county court. 
And what I did this morning is I sat in the, in the, in the county offices and in our regional court system that we're, uh, shared service system that we're proposing. And it's gonna be one of the first, the only in the state of New Jersey in a pilot program which will save uh, taxpayers money. Uh, I spoke to the judges and as we were hiring and interviewing judges to who were gonna take over that county program, that's one of the main issues that we talked about this morning. And, and, in, and in those interviews this morning, we asked the judges the, the, that very question. And so I believe that um, the answer, to one of the things that we can do uh, to solve that problem is uh, some of the things that the judges that brought up this morning in that county court system. And that time just took my whole train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know where I was going after she put that up. <laughs> All right, thank you. Uh, rebuttals? Can I rebut myself? No, um, <laughs> <laughs> rebuttals? Mr. Dom Gandhi. Thank you. Domestic violence is an issue. Right now in, in America, in, in Atlantic County, we're seeing a rise of crime right now. You know, I think that we, what we should do is to look at the police departments that have been doing a good job right now. For example, um, in Atlantic City, I was just with AC Devco just this week, Atlantic County Development Corporation, and I was speaking to one of the police officers in Atlantic City, and one of the things that he proposed that they do there is that they have two police officers in each ward. Those police officers there ha know, know the community. The city sends out a postcard with the, with the uh, police officer's name, also their number. So these people know who's protecting them. These people know who's serving them. We have to make sure that we have trust with our police so that they can have our backs and we can have their backs. Thank you. Another rebuttal? Any more? Ms. Kern? Uh, sexual assault and domestic violence, uh, they're daunting uh, statistics. Over 80% of them have to do with alcohol abuse and substance abuse. Uh, we need to bring awareness and educate. We have to listen to the victims. We have to choose to step in. We have some Avanzar. Avanzar. Mm -hmm. I always pronounce that wrong and I apologize. We have that available to people in the court system. What they are proposing to do or doing at this time is they tell, they get the person into, oh, that always gets, <laughs> they get the person in the right direction of where they need and get them help immediately. It is distracting. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Mr. Bells. Yes, thank you. Yes, as, as I stated well, earlier, as a, a board member for Avanzar, which formerly is known as the, the Women's Center here in Atlantic County, which um, basically is the organization where the, the sexual assault nurses come from, the um, domestic violence, um, help is the um, there's there's many different facets of a Vanzar um, transitional housing the um, shelter for battered women um, I know it way too well I've been on more domestic violence calls in my career in the city of Pleasantville than I want to talk about and um, you know whatever we can do to um, change that trend we need to do thank you okay good all right, moving on to another question. And this is for Ms. Witherspoon. Since the Great Recession, Atlanta County has ranked near the top nationwide, nationally, in foreclosures. Is there anything county elected officials could do to improve that trend and at least help residents who are losing their homes? I'm sure that there is something that can be done. Um, I'm not sure what that is right now because a lot of people lost their jobs, which helped cause the foreclosure. So I think um, economic development, uh, economics, I mean, people with jobs to maintain their homes would help um, with the foreclosure uh, situation. Right now, there's money out there with Ocean Inc you know, and there's mortgage money due to the pandemic to help people with their um, mortgages, their rent, so they're able to maintain their homes um, and not lose them at this particular time. Rebuttals? Ms. Kern? I just wanna say that we are doing something in Atlanta County during the past pandemic that when we've been going through, and I just wanna remind everybody, we are still in a pandemic. But what we have done with the Atlanta County Improvement Authority, we have offered rental assistance as well as mortgage assistance to individuals that need it and a, a couple other plans. 
Bells? I think, I think you wrote this question for me. Um, as I stated earlier, as, as sheriff, I started the Real Help program, and um, I lived through the foreclosure crisis where Atlantic County, month after month after month, was number one in the entire country in foreclosures and was able to help so many people remain in their homes and save their homes. And that's what I bring to the board. And that technology and that information is, is there and available um, at a phone call's notice from anyone that, that needs it here in Atlantic County. Thank you. Did you? Put yes, your hand up? it comes to equality and getting access to good paying jobs for our residents. And like my opponent said before, he's, he's colorblind, but you can see black or brown because we're missing, missing you. And I don't remember what you did for our communities when, when you were uh, a sheriff. So it start with helping our community. It start with equality. It start, it start with creating good paying jobs and giving access to the resident equally and fairly to those jobs. Thank you. Ms. Parker. We got to look at the root cause of the problem once again. And I think it's economic development. It's been said. Um, and if you look at um, once again, where we are, we're not outside of a major metropolitan, we're not outside of Philadelphia, we're not outside of New York City. So there, there are some challenges that we have when it comes to that. The railway is important. People should be able to get on that railway from Atlantic City and go to work in Philadelphia and be there in less than 40 minutes. They should be able to make it to Washington, D.C. in less than an hour. They should be able to work in New York City and, less, and get there in, a, in an hour and go to work. If we don't do that, then we're never going to be able to attract the kind of paying jobs that we need down here, and it's always going to be a problem. All right, thanks. Okay, we're good? All right. Okay, next question is to Mr. Ballas. Atlantic County's economy continues to rely mainly on seasonal tourism. What could be done to diversify this local economy? Okay, thank you, sir. I, I believe that's what we're doing right now with the aviation park. Um, if it wasn't for the pandemic, we would have a third building completely built and fully <laughs> occupied out in Agarver Township. Um, with what's been done out there, with the buildings that are, have been built, they're fully occupied. Now they're talking about putting a hotel out there, which will improve that area. Um, in, again, in Egerber Township, um, the area around the old Shore Mall and the old Pathmark Plaza, that's looking at redevelopment there. There's, there's many other things that are happening, as I spoke earlier about the water park, um, funded through ACIA, a, a, a loan through them, and diversification is, is what needs to happen. We need good paying jobs for every citizen that's available. Um, listen, through this pandemic, everywhere you go, there are signs that says help want it, whether it's on the boardwalk or whether it's in Hamilton. Um, the people were getting um, paid basically to stay home, and they did. Now, hopefully, we can get people back to work and have some of the stuff that's been going on, stop. Thank you. Rebuttals? Ms. Kern? Okay, I'm just gonna uh, piggyback a little bit on what Commissioner Ballas just said. Uh, we do have a plan in Atlantic County. When someone says we don't, we have had a plan that we put together with all the citizens of the county. And it took quite some time, but it's very intricate. It is a five, six level plan the first one was we went after the aviation industry because it made sense. We needed a magnet industry to bring other industries into this area. And that was our magnet industry because we can go off of FAA and our airport. That is being a success already and we're combining education within our uh, schools in, in our um, Thank you. county. Thank you. Ms. Fernandez. Yes, we are talking about the aviation uh, center, which is great. It's going to bring, you know, good paying jobs and opportunity. But we're forgetting that our Alani County residents don't have the skills to fill those jobs. So what are we doing over here? Not everybody is uh, technology savvy. So we should be diversifying an economy, yes, with the aviation, with the uh, trade, uh, 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 schools so we can we can teach 
other things to the residents uh, in other areas. Excuse me, uh, Baliza, any problem? If you can understand me. I understand you. Oh, okay, but okay. That's, but that's already happening, just in case you didn't know. Well, that's already <laughs> happening. It should have happened a long time ago, and it's happening really slow because people are in need. All right, let's please try to limit this to 30 seconds because we still want to get through more questions, Mr. Parker. I'd like to say that it is happening, and I'm a part of that, that plan that's happening, not just talking about theories up here on the stage. I am a part of economic development in Egg Harbor Township, and Egg Harbor Township is the first municipality that's working with the ACEA, the Atlantic County Economic Alliance, to formulate a revisioning plan or an economic development plan for the local municipalities that's in line with the county's economic development plan, which then falls in line with the state EDA's plan, and then looks at the federal fundings that's coming down. And so we, we are doing that right now, which is giving us the opportunity to have a four-story hotel that we're doing in Egg Harbor Township right now. The Aviation Center, you hear all these, prog all these uh, uh, programs they're talking about in economic development are happening in Egg Harbor Township, and there's a reason for that. Thank you. Atlantic City and Atlantic County has always been a seasonal town from Memorial Day to Labor Day. Uh, I think um, the programs that are being done are great, but I think again we need to meet with our leaders and collab collaborate with how we can keep things going all year long. Then we, if you are in the casinos, you do have shows and different things of that nature, but I think more of a, of a family atmosphere would keep uh, people coming to our uh, city. Andy. I think what we're all saying is correct. We do need to diversify our economy. You know, right now we do have the major three. We have the tech center, which all my life I've worked with or been talking to someone who works there, my mother. Uh, we have the medical uh, industry. And then we also have the airports. And also we also have, uh, like I mentioned, the medical and then also the um, other industries. So what I think we should do is diversify that. Not too long ago, I was talking to a woman named Linda from Summers Point who was telling me how difficult it is for her to choose between either her insulin or her food. That's unacceptable, especially in, Al in Atlantic County and especially in America. You know, when it comes to those major three, which is the casino, medical, and the airport, that's just not enough and we've got to do more. Thank you. Okay. All right. The next question is going to go to Ms. Hernandez. <clears throat> Has the state uh, takeover of Atlantic City's government helped or hurt the rest of the county and its tax structure? Well, we had to think first, why was the takeover in place in the first place? Because we, are, we was heading in the wrong direction. If it's hurting or helping the city, I think to this point, it's helping the city, the city of Atlantic City to get better. Because before the pandemic, the city of Atlantic City was slowly but surely getting somewhere uh, with the help of the government. Okay, rebuttals, 30 seconds. Yeah, please. I think with everything that you just heard on the stage from each and every one of us, it's hard to make the argument that the state takeover did any good for any of us, all right? They left us, they came in, it was a mess, and they left, it's still a mess. So it's up to us to fix our own problems. The state of New Jersey is not the answer. It's gonna come from local ingenuity, local ideas like we have now. Once again, you look at the Hamilton Mall, and, and which is in the third district, and the Shore Mall area, which is in the third district. The Shore Mall area and all of our mall areas in Egg Harbor Township is part of a redevelopment plan, which I helped, on, helped create on the Economic Development Commission in Egg Harbor Township. We need to do the same thing for the Hamilton Mall, and we can't have our major mall areas that look the way that they do. Thank you. Mr. Bell? Yes, sir, thank you. So Atlantic County, Atlantic County government is in great shape. Our bond rating is second to none. Um, that is why Atlantic City and the state and many other people in the industry have come to Atlantic County for assistance um, in bonding. Um, has it hurt or helped the other municipalities? It's hurt some of the municipalities because of the tax rate and what they had to pick up because of the pilot program in Atlantic City. So it, it does hurt other communities, but luckily the other communities have survived and they're strong and they're strong because Atlantic County 
Atlanta County government and administration is very strong. Thank you. I just wanted to say that the state is still here. It hasn't left. <laughs> so um, I think that, again, um, with the, the state being in here, um, I'm sure Atlantic City didn't want that, but the finances of the city, it had to come in and help the city to get um, sovereign, sovereign, you know, with, the, with their finances. So that was a big help for the city of Atlantic City. Thank you. Okay. All right, next question for Mr. Gandhi. What, if anything, should the county do to prepare for the increased traffic, increased need for housing, and increased need for services when or if you experience a growth in the workforce for the windmill installation off the coast? Well, I think like we've all been seeing around the county and around the country, there's, for, there's help wanted signs everywhere. Um, right now, when it comes to the wind power, like you mentioned, uh, there's, pro there's talk about Orsted coming in. Right now, they want to do a lot of work with bringing in new jobs, bringing in some new union jobs. I'm sorry, did, did, you, did you ask about the, the wind? Okay. Yeah, but like yeah. I was saying, um, you know, those are going to be new jobs, and that's the future for Atlantic County. I think that right now, we've all been seeing how climate change has affecting us. It just rained earlier today, and I'm sure going on your way to, to the Atlantic City on the Whitehorse Pike, you're going to see how the water has flooded the area. But we have to make sure that when we do these big projects, that they're done conservatively and they're done meaningfully, and they can supply the jobs in Atlantic County. Okay. Any other? Sure. I'll rebut that. Yeah, please. Thank you. Um, not really rebutting it, but um, I, I'm hoping that the jobs that come from the, the windmill and that program are Atlantic County jobs, okay. that they're not bringing Thank people in from other states, from other counties. Hopefully that's Atlantic County residents, Atlantic City residents, and you won't see the influx of traffic and housing because um, we're already overburdened with housing and, and traffic in, in this area. Um, also, just to, to step back a second with the previous question, has the state hurt Atlantic City? Yes, they need to, they need to promote a police chief. It is killing the morale in Atlantic City and it is hurting terribly in police services in Atlantic City. Please. When you talk about the police and service and the residents of Atlantic City, we have, and I, I, I say we, I was involved too, uh, together with the NWNCP, just to have equity in the police, inequality in this police department with our uh, nomination of lieutenants as a black and brown community. You start right there. There's a lot of problems that had to be resolved. Yes, we had to do it together, but it's hurting. Well, again, you are calling blind because lieutenants for, from our communities were, were put in place because of the government that otherwise wouldn't be there. Thank you. Anything in further? Okay, we're, gonna, we're, we're, we're coming to the end, and I'm going to uh, throw out a few topics. Each of you will have 90 seconds to respond. Uh, you're all going to be asked the same question, and then we'll just start again with um, Ms. Kern. Would you like to address any of the following issues? Social, e uh, social and economic problems such as rising crime in, in some of the communities, gun violence, or chronic unemployment? Um, gun violence, if I don't know which one to pick from there, but um, I'm going to get into guns and school safety because it's very disturbing to me. I have sons of my own, but I believe the role of education, educators is to educate our children. It is troubling that one of the solutions being discussed is arming teachers. We've heard that time and time again. We need to continue discussion. We need a better process by which to screen individuals. And we also, I don't own a gun, so I'm not about guns, but I do believe in our Second Amendment, the right to bear arms. 
However, I do not believe that we should allow people to buy assault weapons that are you know, out there on the market or any type of gun in that category. Um, we are a nation that was cr created by an immigration population. I believe we need to protect our borders. There is a right way and a wrong way. And, you know, back, you know, how am I on my time? <laughs> okay, so, yeah, I, um, I do believe that also, as everyone may know, that I am definitely an advocate of mental health. I think that should be a major issue at any time when somebody purchases a gun. We should look at the background. We should understand a little bit more about that individual that's purchasing guns. Thank you. Mr. Parker. As a minority and a teacher that services in those communities, in the low socioeconomic communities, um, I think gun violence and unemployment are both social and economic issues. I think it starts with giving people it starts with giving people good opportunities and it starts with education. If we educate from a young age and we teach our children how to conduct themselves, how to behave, it's not about having a gun or having ownership of a gun, it's what you do with it once you own it. And so what I did when I, I saw, I, I work in a school that had gun violence and I saw my, my students that were struggling with it. So what I did is I became a firearms instructor. I went to the classes, I became an instructor, and so anyone that wants to properly learn how to handle a firearm or own a firearm, the firearm is no different than owning a vehicle. If you don't use it irresponsibly, it won't hurt anybody. Ms. Hernandez. Yes, it's, when it's come to the unemployment rate, that we, we have the highest unemployment rate in the, we had the highest unemployment rates in the nation. And that was the one in the nation, in the country, and that was the one in the state of New Jersey. And what we have to do, give access to quality education. I agree with Mr. Parker. He started right there, inequality. We're not gonna hide that we are fighting uh, systemic racism full of disparities and inequality. He started with the education. Thank you. Mr. Gandy. Uh, if this question regards to gun violence, all my life, gun violence has been a big epidemic in this country. We've seen Parkland, we've seen Columbine, we've seen all the other events going around uh, this country. What we need to make sure we do is to support the, the smart gun owners, support businesses that do things with smart uh, gun owners. For example, we have a gun range 129, uh, range 129, which is a small business. They're actually um, stocked in grads from right here, and they do a great job with making sure that people who do own guns know how to work it properly. They're doing a good job with making sure that those who have guns are educated and that they can go on to educate people who want to go ahead and go ahead and, you know, orchestrate their Second Amendment right. Thank you. Smith Richardson. Well, this is a huge topic that is nationwide, and it's something that, as commissioners, that we should be concerned about but it's not what we do. Uh, we do legislation for the county government. Uh, I think, again, we would have to work with people. Um, I think being a commissioner, you have to work with other people to come up with solutions, you know, and collaborate with the various agencies, the police department, the sheriff was, you know, has a long career in law enforcement. Thank you. This is still 90 seconds, correct? Sorry? This is still 90 seconds? No. For yes. Each, each person? It? Yeah, 90, 90 seconds. 90 seconds. That's what I thought. Okay. I thought we were going to have a bottle. Thank you. Um, no. No, no. no. We're, we're, no each, this, each, this, each, each candidate was supposed to get 90 seconds. Yeah, so I, I yeah, changed it a bit just to accommodate. I stayed in 30 seconds because I wasn't sure. All right. Does anybody want to add anything before I start? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sorry, just please speak up. Okay, thank you. Okay. So kind of um, what I want to talk about addresses everything that you just spoke about. Um, I was one of the founding members of the Coalition for a Safe Community, um, which came out of a gun buyback program that we had here in Atlantic County. Um, the Coalition for Safe Community has addressed many issues and has had many training classes um, for 
Atlantic City, Pleasantville, Galloway, Egg Harbor City, um, and invited students from all across the entire county to come sit in on a lot of the programs that they have. Um, I invented a, a um, computer program where I had a gentleman come in who owned a computer company and basically taught a computer class over the summer. Instead of um, the students being just sitting home or sitting on the beach, um, two days a week they came into the, the library in, in Atlantic City, the Carnegie Library, and they were taught how to use the Chromebooks. And at the end of the program, they were given the Chromebook. Um, there was many um, uh, other gun by bribe programs through the Coalition of the Safe Community. There was training classes on how to interview, how to um, seek out the jobs, whether it's law enforcement or any other career. There was um, a lot of connection with law enforcement and the community to bridge that gap, which we so need in the law enforcement community. Law enforcement um, <coughs> needs that gap filled between um, them. That's why we don't have a lot of the problems here in Atlanta County that you see in other states. We don't have the, the large protests. We don't, we don't have the shootings, school shootings like you see in other states, knock on wood, um, thank God. And that, a lot of that is because of the Coalition of Safe Community. Thank you. All right, thank you all. We're, we're just about at the end. Uh, I just really need to thank the hardest working person in the room who was your timekeeper tonight <laughs> in keeping this. Rob Goldberg, thank you so much. It's thank you. A terrific job. Thank you, thank you. All right, so we're at the end. You each will have two minutes to make your closing statements. And again, we're going to go in reverse alphabetical order. So Ms. Uh, Witherspoon, please start. I want to thank the League of Women Voters for having this uh, forum on tonight along with Stockton University and the press um, for allowing us to come here and to, for the community to hear our perspectives on various issues. I am running in this position for Atlantic County Commissioner for District 3. I am qualified to run in this position. I'm the former president of the Board of Education and I know how to work with people, how to, um, get along with others, I know how to compromise, and uh, to get the job done. I think what we really need right now is for us to come together as commissioners. If I'm selected, I will work with the commissioner board in order to get things done in Atlantic County and in District 3, which I want to represent. So again, I will want you to vote for me um, on November the 2nd, and my slogan is, let's do it again with Witherspoon. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Mr. Parker. First, I'd like to thank the League of Women Voters and Stockton University for hosting the debate this evening. We live in very serious times and we need people who are serious about doing the work. As you heard from me tonight, I believe a promise made should equate to a promise kept. Too many times we vote for the people who can move the crowd with prepared speeches and shiny words. We need leaders who will put people above all else and once elected fulfill all of the duties and responsibilities of the office in which they took their oath. I have a proven track record of fulfilling my promises. I have, a continue, I have continued to deliver on my promises of economic development and social equity and as always, there is more work to be done. I am asking for your support on November 2nd so that I can continue to fulfill my promises to do the work of the people. Thank you all, and thank the audience for coming out and sitting through this. I know that's not easy. Thank my girls down there. Thank you girls for coming out and supporting your father. Thank you. <laughs> Ms. Kern. You've heard tonight my opponent share his views on Atlanta County as a recent college graduate with no track record as a public servant. You've heard a lot of new ideas, the need for change, with no proven experience by which to place action behind those words. Action and experience speak louder than words. My running mates, Frank Ballas, Jim Bertino, and Andrew Parker and I are about action. We take very seriously our duty to the taxpayers of Atlanta County to continue to drive economic development, create jobs, 
foster our education institutions and address public health issues and the safety of Atlanta County residents. You have only to look at our proven record of success. We have one of the best run counties in the state, if not the nation, with sound financial policies and management that allow us to do the things that we do with economic development. You had the opportunity to hear about my experiences in working in our local economy and serving in public office, both in Summers Point and as city council president, as well as your Atlanta County Commissioner and Chair of the Board. By now, you have an understanding of what shapes me as a public servant and makes me uniquely positioned to be your commissioner. I'm running for re-election for the same reason you want good county government, our children's future. I have and will always be honest with you. I am not a bunch of campaign slogans. I am about getting the job done and serving the people of Atlantic County. Thank you, and I hope I have your vote for Tuesday, November 2nd. Thank you. Mr. Gandy. I want to thank the League of Women Voters for hosting us tonight. We all know that Atlantic County is going through a tough time right now, but we've got to get out of this pandemic better than we were when we got into it. If there's anything you remember from this debate, remember this. Anyone in leadership who led Atlantic County to being the foreclosure capital of the nation, anyone who led us to become the highest unemployment rate in the state, does not deserve another chance to serve. On November 2nd, you all have a choice. We can go with the same old failed policies, the same old broken promises, or a new direction. On day one, I will be ready to serve you, the people. You'll have someone who's gonna address the cost of living. You'll have someone who's gonna be a strong force for new job opportunities. And you'll have someone who's independent from partisan politics. We need fundamental change in this nation, in this county, and I'm going to bring it. The past few months, people from all over District 2 have invited me to their homes to talk. Democrats, independents, and yes, plenty of Republicans. And they've all confirmed with me that there isn't anything we can't do when we do it together. That's why our best days lie ahead. And I'm confident with the best leadership, with new leadership, we can get back onto that road to recovery. And if you give me this extraordinary chance in honor of serving you, I give you my word as a Gandhi. I will work on your behalf and the behalf of the future generations to come. I'm not only asking for your vote, I'm asking for you to believe that Atlantic County can do better. Thank you so much. Okay. Ms. Fernandez. Thank you for being here tonight, and thank you, the League of Women Voters, again, and Stockton, happy 50th anniversary. Uh, if, I'm, if I'm the one qualifier of the best for the job, I believe, yes, I am. I am a small business owner, already in the financial and economic development world. And before I had my own business, I worked for the United Here uh, Benef Local 54 Benefits Office, where I did management and also office operation. Also, I do real estate. I was in the uh, mortgage world. So I know firsthand the needs of our community. I've been there for 20 years. I know what it takes to move Alani County forward. I don't read from the paper. I talk from my heart, I speak from my heart. Because what happened last year changed our life. That 20 years that I worked serving the community was nothing compared to what I had seen last year. Hate, had to, had to walk with and, and, and protect the life of our brothers and sisters with the Black Lives Matter movement. Had to be out there for months, hours, and days helping the families in Alani County to put food on the table. This is the family that I saw working two jobs on those casinos for years and years and years, losing their home. Our children are hopeless. They need hope so that they, they, they can believe that they can live and thrive in Alani County. We need new leadership. Experience, yes, experience is always good. But there's a problem over here. We keep doing the same thing and expecting different results. Our opponent, there's two things over here, and keep in mind. They don't know how to resolve the problem, or they are the problem. My name is Celeste Fernandez. 
Please call, call them B, vote call them B, November the 2nd. Again, Celeste Fernandez, thank, thank you, you for being here. Thank you. Mr. Ballas. Thank you, Sarah, and thank you for coming down from your county to moderate here in ours. <laughs> we appreciate it. Thank you. Um, thank you to the League of Women Voters and also Stockton University and the Press of Atlantic City. Um, we appreciate your time in letting the public know um, what our views are and what our opponents' views are. Um, as you can see, experience matters. Um, you know me as the sheriff here in Atlantic County and all the great things we did with the sheriff's office. Um, people realized a few years back that we actually had a sheriff's office here in Atlantic County. And that's what I bring to the board. And as we transition out of COVID-19 and into a bigger and brighter future, we need experienced people. No, I have not been on the Board of Commissioners very long. It'll be, like I said, it'll be a year coming up next month. Um, I, I'm not, you know, a perennial politician that runs for the commission every single year um, or every three years. And I haven't been here for 20 years, um, but we know what needs to be done. We know how to do it. And we're a voice for all the people here in Atlantic County. Yeah, do I agree all the time with everything that is put forward with county administration? No, and I do speak my mind because I'm an independent person. Um, you've heard my opponent say she's been working in the community for 20 years and complains and complains and complains about this county. Well, you know what? I was born and raised here and been here my entire life and my family's been there their entire life. Um, we love Atlantic County. Um, we haven't just been here 20 years. Um, we're about results and getting results done all the time, every day. Thank you very much for the, the viewers that are out there watching online and also listening on the radio. We appreciate it. And please, I'm asking for your vote come November 2nd. My name is Frank Ballas, and I'm in column, column A. Thank you. Okay, folks, thank you all for coming, for showing interest in the democratic process. I, I, I just want to say that it was a real pleasure for me to be here tonight because I met some really extraordinary folks in the Atlantic County League of Women Voters. Um, these are your neighbors. They do this voluntarily. They believe in the process. And I'm really thankful that I had a chance to meet you. And I'm really glad to have met all of you. I think this was a really good debate this evening. And so I want to congratulate everyone who had something to do with this. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.